Hello, everyone, and welcome to our talk, Securing Content Distribution with the Update Framework. My name is Lukas Bühringer. I'm maintainer of the software security supply chain projects Tough and Intoto at New York University's Secure System Lab. Uh, my name is Joshua Locke. I am the security lead in VMware's Open Source Technology Center, where I also uh, maintain Tough. Okay, um, let's see uh, what we're going to talk about today. Um, so first, we will talk very briefly about content distribution, what we actually mean by that, and um, what challenges exist. Then we'll give a tough primer, um, tough being short for the update framework, and talk about uh, the pillars tough is based on and the principles um, it, it uses. And yeah, and how it uh, above all faces the challenges of content distribution. And last but not least, we'll talk about how to get involved in the project because this is a maintainer track talk of a of an open source project. So uh, we want you to get excited and help us out. Uh, but first things first, um, content distribution. What content do we mean? Um, basically any digital content that needs to be kept, kept up to date. Um, this can be software, primarily it is software, but it can also be any sort of metadata, um, legal documents, etc. cetera. Um, but yeah, usually it is software. Um, as such, um, the content distribution is part of the software supply chain and a very crucial part too, because it's at the user boundary in this software supply chain graph. Uh, by software supply chain, I mean all the steps uh, that are carried out in order to um, write software, to test it, build it, package it, um, and to finally ship it out. Um, so being at the edge of this graph, content distribution, um, needs to be uh, done carefully because whatever gets distributed is what uh, um, should be what the, um, well, let's, let's put it differently. So um, once software leaves the premises of the software producers, there is, um, they will have a hard time to enforce any quality assurance on the software. So it should make sure that the software the intent the user to have um, is actually the software that they get. So that is why this is a crucial part of the supply chain and also a very attractive target for attackers because if the attackers compromise the content distribution, um, they uh, can have a huge impact of millions of users um, potentially. Um, and this also happens in the real world. And Joshua will talk a little bit about uh, when this happened before. Sure. So, um, just the next slide, please, Lucas. Oh, sure. Sorry. <clears throat> so um, you might think that software, secure software updates are a solved problem, especially if you, like me, come from a background of uh, using Linux distributions where you get all of your software from a single kind of point and it's delivered in a secure fashion. But remote update systems are regularly compromised to, deli to deliver malicious content to users. And you can see kind of a, a logo soup of um, systems that have been compromised uh, effectively to deliver uh, malicious content. Um, and this continues to happen uh, you know, to this day as more software is produced that leverages new and different uh, software update systems. Uh, they continue to be deployed um, with flaws that are susceptible to the kinds of compromise um, that uh, <clears throat> enable someone to deliver malicious content. So relatively recently, a large um, 
computer systems vendor uh, had the piece of software on the uh, devices that they sold that um, was used to update the firmware and drivers and whatnot on those devices. And that software update system was compromised to deliver malicious content that was um, targeting specific users. So the malicious content was delivered to huge swathes of users and a subset of those users were targeted to uh, kind of activate that malicious content and uh, do unkind things. Um, and that continues to be the case. You know, we, we continue to see these kinds of attacks happen um, uh, against multiple types of uh, software update systems. <clears throat> and so you might think, surely there's an easy solution to that. And could you just switch to the next slide, please? Um, and so a couple of things might come to mind when you're thinking of that this being a, a relatively easy problem or a solved problem. Um, one solution that might come to mind is that we all became so used to seeing the little padlock in our browser URL bars that the browsers don't even show it anymore. So that uses to indicate the presence of um, certificates, uh, HTTPS certificates, uh, so SSL or TLS certificates protecting your connection. Um, and that kind of uh, is like a very low amount of security for a software update system. Um, it does improve on pure HTTP uh, kind of status quo of old, but um, it's still a single point of failure. There's a single key which is kept online in the system's memory, which is prone to compromise um, and um, even then, uh, all the, the only kind of guarantee that an SSL TLS certificate gives is that you have um, received content from the server that you intended to connect to. It doesn't provide any additional guarantees about the integrity of that content or um, that the server that you did connect to was even the one you intended to because you know your software update system is really indicating which server it's actually connecting to. Um, so if you, you know, if you think about it a bit more, you probably have heard of um, PGP, uh, pretty good privacy, I think that's the acronym, uh, or the GNU PG implementation, GPG, uh, and think maybe you can just use that to sign the things you're distributing. Um, this is a positive step because it gives you offline keys, uh, and that's good. Um, the keys are not kept consistently in memory, so that's an extra level of protection. But as soon as you start to introduce offline keys, you have to worry about things like key distribution and rev revocation. So key management is known to be a difficult problem, as is knowing which keys to trust. Um, the GPG or any kind of signing system, any naive signing system only provides the security properties of knowing that the thing was authentic at the time of the signature uh, and that the thing is has retained its integrity that it hasn't been tampered with. A signature will not uh, validate if the thing has been, the thing that's been signed is modified. But it doesn't help with a whole slew of attacks, including things like um, replay of attacks where you deliver a previously signed bit of content that's no longer valid, or mix and match attacks, or you know, uh, various other types of attacks that um, are covered in more detail in the update frameworks uh, documentation. The other thing I'd say about GPG is that it has well-known usability problems, um, which have been documented ad nauseum and have led for led to kind of huge, or relatively huge numbers of security uh, folks just giving up on the system. Um, <clears throat> so uh, there's no real good easy solution. There's also uh, new types of attack coming out all the time. And so very recently, there was this dependency confusion or dependency substitution attacks, um, whereby the, the security researcher Alex Bersan noticed that um, a lot of corporations have internal package repositories that uh, publish or that host content for their internal systems. And the users of those internal package repositories had misconfigured package managers that would reach out to public repositories before reaching out to the internal repository or instead of reaching out to the internal repository. And that meant that um, the security researcher was able to put packages on the public repositories with malicious content that replicated the internal names. 
Um, and so companies were just blindly installing software from the public repository that was malicious, thinking they were installing the, the packages they intended from their internal systems. Um, and I think this is interesting for two reasons. One, we actually have uh, an enhancement to the tough specification, which would help protect against an attack like this. But I think it's also just indicative of how um, content uh, delivery is a very um, attractive target for uh, malicious software. And uh, Tuf provides a very solid foundation for, for protecting against known attacks and for building protections against future attacks on top of. So um, with that kind of um, introduction, I'll hand back to Lucas to uh, talk us through some of the principles of Tuf. Thanks, Joshua. Um, okay, let's look at Tuf more closely. Um, what can Tuf do for you? Tuf is based on these three pillars. Um, first of all, it protects your uh, your content. More precisely, it protects the freshness, consistency, and integrity properties of your contents. Um, then on top of that, it um, reduces the impact of a successful compromise. Um, Joshua has uh, shown us that these compromises do happen, that uh, keys, especially keys that are kept online can get lost, but even GPG keys need to be revoked every now and then. Um, so that indicates they also get lost or stolen. Um, so TUF has mechanism, mechanisms to reduce the in impact of such a key loss or compromise. And um, speaking of recovery, uh, TUF um, was built with recovery from, um, wait, uh, yeah, TUF was built with re recovery of keys in mind. So and that's built into the core design of TUF. Uh, let's see how TUF can do all those things. Um, Regarding the content protection, um, TUF employs cryptographic signatures for that, it uses as uh, asymmetric uh, cryptography um, and signs both the content, but also um, the, uh, the entire repository. So um, <clears throat> signing one software package, for instance, or one um, container image, um, is pretty good. It um, guarant gives you a guarantee about the integrity of that file. Um, and that's what many or most software updaters maybe do. Uh, it's not, nothing out of the ordinary, uh, but it's also important to ensure that the entire repository is consistent because an attacker uh, who can control which files are served uh, might be able to serve uh, files that are benign by themselves, each of them, uh, but not uh, if they're served together. Um, so that's why Tuff needs to, uh, or Tuff signs both the content and the individual content and the entire repository. And uh, as for the freshness property, um, Tuff uses implicit key revocation, um, also known as expiration. So Jeff, Tuff just puts expiration dates on signatures. Um, that means that if a, an attacker can uh, intercept traffic and uh, tell the client that there are no new updates, the client will detect this at some point um, because the local signatures will expire and the client will ask for new, um, new signatures. Um, so much to protect in the content. Um, what about reducing impact of key loss? Um, TUF employs uh, several principles to reduce the impact of key loss. Uh, first of all, it separates responsibilities. So I've already talked about different responsibilities. Um, consistency, integrity, uh, freshness, all of these, uh, for all of these a separate role exists in the tough design um, and thus separate signing keys. Um, separation of responsibilities uh, allows you to 
um, still continue operation if one key is lost. Uh, same goes for threshold signing. Um, that's like separation of responsibilities within one responsibility. So for instance, for the role that uh, deals with the integrity of the contents, um, Tough might require multiple uh, keys to sign, to sign for that content. Then last but not least, uh, the separation of responsibilities also allows you to balance trust or responsibility and uh, risk, which is often related to um, the availability um, of keys. So um, an example would be a, a key that needs to sign content every couple of minutes, uh, which needs to be highly available and thus kept online, um, is at much higher risk to, to be compromised. So TUF can assign very few responsibilities, place very little trust into that key. On the other hand, a key that has uh, huge responsibilities and uh, needs to be trusted a lot uh, can be kept offline. And um, if uh, a compromise happened, then the repository, content repository, needs to make sure that the client gets new keys. And TUF allows to do this in band, uh, in band mechanisms, by um, creating a hierarchical uh, trust delegation tree, uh, where you have a root role, that's the root of trust, and that delegates trust to all the other roles that we already talked about. So there's the timestamp role, which is responsible for freshness, the snapshot role responsible for consistency, the targets role responsible, responsible for the integrity of the individual content pieces, individual files usually, and root delegates trust to all of them. Um, let's, take at a, uh, let's take a look at a um, diagram uh, of how this can look in practice. This is courtesy of PEP 458, um, secure PyPI downloads with signed repository metadata. PEP stands for Python Enhancement Proposal. And this is basically a design document uh, that describes how tough can be used to secure the uh, Python package index. And um, these are the roles. On the top of this diagram, you can see the root role. Uh, then you can see below it, you can see the other roles I talked about. And the spins role uh, roles are basically also targets roles um, that are responsible for subsets of the content uh, integrity. And uh, the arrows show the trust delegation relationships. So uh, root signs for timestamp, snapshot targets and for itself. And targets can sign for delegated targets. I'm mostly showing you this because uh, we already said that an easy solution um, won't be enough to solve uh, supply chain security or content distribution in particular. Um, tough is not an easy solution, um, but it is also not as hard as it looks. And, um, and this uh, lets me transition to uh, our next part of the talk. Tough is a very friendly community. Um, and uh, there are a lot of people who will love to help you to uh, get started with Tough, to better understand it, to um, integrate it with your package manager. Uh, or to help you um, start contributing if you are interested to do so. Exactly that. <clears throat> so um, yeah, if you have seen uh, this brief introduction to uh, secure content delivery and attacks on those systems and how Tough helps protect against them, maybe you'd like to know how to get involved with Tough. This is a maintainer track talk after all. So uh, if you could switch to the next slide, Lucas. Um, Tough is effectively three uh, main projects. Um, the primary project is actually the specification. This is the, um, the framework in the update framework that describes how to implement a secure update system. And then we have uh, a reference implementation, which is symbiotic with that specification and that um, 
being a reference implementation, it aims to always represent the state of the specification, but also is where we um, proof of concept any enhancements to the specification. And uh, we have this tough augmentations proposals or TAPS process, similar to the uh, Python enhancement proposals or PEPS process that was mentioned for the PyPI work. Um, and this process is for documenting information about the tough system or proposing new features to the tough system. And I'm going to talk about each of those three projects in a little more detail. So the specification, if you were interested in the specification itself um, and how you might contribute to that project, um, probably the easiest way that uh, anyone can contribute to Tough is to review the specification and suggest any clarifications. Um, we have we are continuously working to improve the kind of ease of use for adopters of the Tough specification and make it clearer and more succinct and more approachable. Um, and if you have any feedback on uh, ambiguities or things which just um, don't seem to make sense, then we would welcome that feedback and would like to work with you on how to improve that. And you can uh, reach out to us via the issue tracker or um, our Slack channel, which we'll uh, mention later. Um, in the vein of helping improve the ease of use for adopters, we recently switched the specification from plain markdown to bike shed flavored markdown, which produces this uh, really nice looking specification document you can see in the screenshot here with a table of contents and uh, syntax highlighting and, and anchors for the different sections and subsections. I think it would be really beneficial if some aspects of the specification, specifically the detailed client workflow, had more anchors so that you could refer to specific points in the workflow, for example, from a code comment or when discussing the specification, um, and everyone would be able to follow that link and understand uh, exactly which part of the spec you're talking about. Another um, ease of use uh, change we would like to make to the specification is that today it's um, all written as prose and various parts of the prose are repetitive. You know, there's certain things that we do in the tough specification which um, are very similar to other steps in the specification just with uh, some key uh, words changed. And so, We'd like to reduce some of this duplication by uh, following the example of specifications like uh, um, those specifications that drive the web. So the WG and the W3C specifications, um, they tend to break down uh, these details into subsections that are kind of called out a bit like a procedure in a programming language. Uh, and we'd like to explore doing that within the tough specification as well. <clears throat> um, Next slide, please. So uh, I also mentioned the augmentation proposals, and um, this would be uh, a nice way to get involved in the project as well. We have several work in progress uh, augmentation proposals, um, which could do with security minded folks reviewing them and seeing if, you know, what potential problems they find. We also have uh, draft augmentation proposals, and these are ones which have been kind of merged and approved as a good idea, but I still need some work to, um, to complete. And so reviewing of those would also be welcome, um, but so too would a proof of concept implementation. We don't merge any uh, changes to the specification until they've been proven in code. Um, and so some of the draft apps are waiting for that proof in code to uh, demonstrate um, that the idea is as sound as it seems kind of on proverbial paper. And the final way you might contribute to the TAPS process um, is that you might propose new augmentations to the specification or new um, informational documents that help people kind of understand and deploy TAPS. Um, <clears throat> the other way you might get involved if you're more code minded is contributing to the reference implementation. Um, we're currently undertaking a refactoring effort to provide uh, a really exemplary implementation of Tough with the Python uh, reference implementation. And this is uh, motivated uh, in part by us being software engineers, but also in part by the integration into the Python packaging index, where we've been extending the reference implementation 
to be uh, a little bit more modular. So you can now plug in kind of storage backends. It used to assume that you're writing files to disk. Now that might be cloud storage um, and could be a number of other things with the modularity that we've implemented. We've also recently extracted out um, networking operations. So PIP, which is the, the Python package installer has a very mature um, code base for interacting or for uh, performing network operations uh, and we wanted uh, the tough implementation to be able to take advantage of that um, so we very much welcome contributors to come and, and help us with our ongoing refactoring efforts we're really looking to make this a very good pythonic uh, OO project um, looking to be very clearly mapped to the specification very easy to understand so that it, it can become kind of supplementary to the specification as a way to understand what is happening in tough um and then if python and specification writing is not your thing there are multiple other implementations of tough that uh, i think it would be great if you were interested in contributing to we have a largely dormant uh, go implementation as part of the update framework organization on github um would very much welcome uh, active contributions to that project uh, bring it back to life a bit, bring it up to date with recent changes in the specification. And um, there's a new effort to implement uh, TUF in PHP, um, which is part of um, a collaboration between various PHP content management systems to provide secure auto updates for those systems. And then there are two implementations of TUF in Rust. One is uh, Rust TUF, which is um, kind of automotive focused and is used in various automotive systems today. Uh, and then there's uh, TUF T-O-U-G-H, uh, which is um, the system that adds uh, secure updates to um, AWS's Bottle Rocket OS, which is their uh, Linux container host uh, operating system. And then um, Another way that you might care to get involved is to participate in some of the integrations. So the integrations are how we describe taking TUF and uh, integrating it into an existing software update system. <clears throat> if you have a software update system you work on that you think would benefit from TUF, we'd be happy to discuss how to approach these integrations with you. Uh, but there are also some ongoing integration efforts that you might wish to contribute to. Uh, the Python package index is, um, adopting the reference implementation and um, adding TUF to Warehouse, which is the open source project that backs PyPI. So any contributions to the reference implementation are going to benefit that project, but you might also want to contribute to Warehouse directly. Um, and there are uh, various tasks left to, um, to enable that effort. And I also mentioned uh, the PHP CMS is collaborating on a PHP implementation of TUF. Um, they have uh, the PHP tough implementation as well as various plugins for the composer system to uh, enable tough and other security related features and I'm sure they would welcome um, contributions from excited participants. And then with that before we uh, just switch over to questions, um, <clears throat> wanted to take a moment to thank the uh, the happy, friendly contributors to the system that Lucas mentioned uh, earlier. Uh, if you're interested in learning more, you can go to our website, theupdateframework.io. You can join the Tough channel uh, on the CNCF Slack workspace. Or if you're into email like I am, you can send an email to theupdateframework at googlegroups.com. And um, I've added some references if you'd like to go and read a bit more about TUF and some of the ongoing integrations and implementations uh, you can follow these links and uh, learn some more that way so with that uh, yeah thank you very much for your attention and uh, I look forward to your questions